Hey, welcome to Moore Park Presbyterian Church. We are so glad that you are here with us this morning. Uh, we have a lot in store for you. Uh, the first of which is to say, I believe Sean is going to make the, this very official tomorrow. Or today is what? It's happy, you're going to say happy Father's Day. Father's Day. Yeah, so say that so that we make oh, that official. Yeah, because it's today. I mean, it's today, today. Sunday, this day. Happy, Father, well, happy Father's Day, Keenan. Happy Father's Day, Sean. Hey, happy Father's Day, Bonnie. Hey, you know what it works. Happy just, Father's Day to both just, of you. Just thank yeah. you. Thank yeah. you for that. Yeah, thank so you. happy Father's Day to all of you. Yeah. Um, I'm just curious, um, what, does, um, what does your day look like tomorrow, today? My day. Uh, my day is just helping my boys celebrate their dad. All right. That sounds really good. So there are a couple things happening today that are going to be a little bit different. The first is I want to make it... Uh, just a, a official to say thank you uh, so much to all of you who spent some time online uh, responding to the survey that we sent out this last week. We got a lot of really good information about what reopening uh, will look like. Um, our session uh, meets on Tuesday evening. We're going to be discussing kind of the results of those surveys, looking at what the latest and greatest uh, things from the CDC, from the county, from the state, all those things are looking like. And then hopefully uh, Wednesday or Thursday we'll be able to let you know kind of what our initial sort of plans are for reopening, uh, what that will look like. And so um, thank you for your patience in that. Thank you for your prayer in that as we kind of discern uh, what it is that God's calling us to in that next. Um, as well, um, there were some really great things that happened yesterday. Um, there, the women's ministry here at the church uh, went around to all the men at the church and, and delivered, um, well, they made some very special deliveries uh, for Father's Day, but just in general to recognize the men of the church. And so I think we have a little bit of a glimpse of what some of those deliveries look like. And so we're going to show that to you now. Bearing, he bled and died 
to take away my sin and sings my soul And take me home What joy shall fill my heart Then I shall bow In humble adoration And there proclaim My God, how great Thou art Then sings my soul You blinked your eyes, I know, and we got rid of Keenan. Well, not really. But we did decide in the living room that what we would do is have somebody from our congregation, and who better for Father's Day to have with us than Dean May? Dean yeah. is not only an elder in our church, but he is principal at Simi Valley High School, and he is the father of five as we determined earlier when we thought he had lost one, but now we found that fifth child, and we're back here with Dean this morning. Good morning, Dean. How Good are morning. you? Good morning. Well. I just wanted to ask you a question um, while you're here. Can, do you have anything good, funny, any kind of quarantine story that you want to share with us? Well, with five at home, um, there's uh, probably plenty of uh, funny moments for quarantine, but I'd say probably the biggest thing that I've, I've, I've gained out of this time is uh, I appreciated family before, but really appreciating family um, since uh, that middle of March when things shut down. Um, time at the dinner table uh, almost every night with everyone at the table um, is something that, uh, you know, you just take those opportunities for granted, and it's something I look forward to every day. And then also my kids just tell me to get in the car and we go places and we drive on Sundays, and that's become a highlight, and they just want to go and drive around on Sundays. So the, the family time has been really good to um, connect with the kids and with uh, with my wife. That's great. That's great. So Dean, as a principal in a high school, uh, I can only imagine what you're going through right now as you prepare to go back to school or in some way, shape, or form restart the academic year in the fall. Um, tell us a little bit about that and especially how we can be praying for you and, and for the schools in this area. So I think the, the part that's hard with that is, um, is just the flexibility, reminding everyone to be flexible. I think it's uh, a lot of people want answers now, and what I would hope for, for our families and for our students is that they understand to take the moment now to, uh, to recharge and to rest and be with family and make sure that they're staying safe and um, that what they can do is realize that we will have those guidelines when we get them. And so coming up with a plan right now, which is what everybody wants, is really tough to do when we don't have what it's going to look like at the beginning of August or end of July. Yeah. Um, so the flexibility and uh, and just the patience with it, and to and to take the time now to to enjoy their families. Yeah. Yeah, that's really good advice. So you know that this is normally the time where we uh, talk about the life of the family. I mean, mm -hmm. you do watch us, right? Yes. On Sunday mornings, yep. right? Okay, that's good. So in that light, we want to, wanted to know, how is it, Dean, so we're ho so happy that we can have you actually physically with us. How is it that we can be praying for your family right now? Well, for, uh, for my family specifically, you know, I can talk about... Um, flexibility and patience, but actually putting that into action for me um, and making sure that I balance 
uh, between my family and work and taking care of my 2,000 kids at school, but also my kids at home, and, uh, and just appreciate my wife who's been just a total rock at home to be able to balance all of those things. I'm glad he clarified 2,000 kids at school. Yes. Because yeah. for a moment I thought, well, we had five of them down, but <laughs> we apparently missed, you know, the rest of them. So that's good to know. Just 2,000 at school. He's the principal, so that makes Off sense. Off one, gained one, and then got 2,000 out of it. Yeah, I know. That's crazy. Who knows? By the time this is over, where we'll be. So, uh, you know, as, uh, as Bonnie said, this is the time where we normally share about things that are happening in the life of the church. And I want to take a moment just to also share that uh, next Sunday, we're going to be having a blood drive here at the church. And if you'd like more information about that, you can check our website or, of course, the weekly newsletter that gets sent out. We'll have more information about that, but we hope that all of your 2,000 kids will participate. That pretty much has it covered. If we just have the May family, I think we're, we're set. So we'll sign up. Perfect. All right. Well, right now we are going to continue in worship as uh, we sing together this morning. stories of what they think your life but I heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone your good good vibe it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. I've seen many searching for it. Far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide us, know just what we need before we say your word. Your
you, Alex and band. And this morning we want to continue in our worship now with a time of prayer. So if you'd please just, wherever you're at right now, just join us by uh, closing your eyes and bowing your head. And let's go before the Lord together in prayer. Almighty God, we come before you today. And Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to come together in prayer. We thank you for the opportunity to join together regardless of where we are physically and to lift up our concerns and our needs to you. And Lord, this morning uh, we begin by just praying for these things that Dean has shared with us. Lord, especially as we look at the education system, we look at the teachers and the principals and Lord, the staff and faculty around here, uh, very difficult decisions that they have to make and, and so many different factors of uh, state and federal government and different entities that play into how they're making these decisions and what they're able to do. And Lord, in the midst of this, uh, first we ask for great wisdom and discernment for Dean and for his staff and for the other principals and administrators around uh, not just our area, but around the country, Lord. Uh, we pray that uh, they would be able to make wise and well-informed decisions, that they would have the information that they need. Uh, Lord, we pray for the many, many parents who are concerned about the safety of their kids, and, and rightly so, Father, um, and have questions. We pray for patience, uh, as the answers may not be so easy to come to and may take time. Uh, may there be an extraordinary amount of patience on the part of parents and students and all those involved, teachers, Father, everyone. Um, and may there also be great flexibility. Uh, school may look different than it's looked before. And God, we pray that we are able to move and bend and through it all, God, that we would keep you first and that we would walk through this with both, uh, as Jesus had, both grace and truth together in harmony, Lord. Um, help us to do that. And uh, God, we just pray that uh, as we move forward in this season, Lord, uh, with school and with everything that's happening, God, that you would be at the center of it, guiding, directing all of our steps. Lord, we thank you um, today for um, all the fathers uh, that are with us and those who have gone before us. Lord, we, we bless you and honor you as our father knowing that you have given us fathers. And Lord, we also know that this day may be hard. Uh, it, it may be difficult for people, people who are now grieving the loss of the father that they have had for their entire life and who's now gone, for those who are grieving the loss of a father they never had. But Lord, we lift up and give this all to you for we know that you are the great healer in all circumstances. And we also pray now for our community, for our nation, and for our world, knowing that as we come together, two or more of us, that you've promised to be with us, that if we ask, that we shall receive. And Lord, now we are praying to you and giving this all up to you. We ask that you send your Holy Spirit to burn in the hearts of men and women of the world, that we may unite and become one, that we may know that we are brothers and sisters together in all that is happening in our world today, through illnesses and disasters and wars and anything that is coming for the division that we're experiencing within our states, within our country, and within the world. And Lord, in, in, in light of all of this and knowing, we know that your son Jesus gave us a prayer, a prayer to offer to you, a prayer to bring us together, to unite us as one. So now we pray that prayer by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let's continue in worship.
Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing with Thank you guys. That's awesome. Uh, I so appreciate the way that you draw us into places where uh, we as a church uh, can be led in worship and led to the, to the throne. So thank you for your gifts and the way that you use them. Uh, my name is Keenan Barber. I'm the senior pastor here at Moore Park Presbyterian Church, and um, it's Father's Day. And so uh, I wanted to start uh, by talking a, a little bit about my, my own dad. Uh, my dad is a retired cardiologist who lives in the Coachella Valley. And, uh, and uh, his dad was a, was a contractor in Pittsfield, Illinois. 
Um, and my dad's name is Keenan. Uh, his dad's name was Keenan. Uh, my grandfather was Keenan Clarence. My dad is Keenan Frank. I'm Keenan Thomas. And then I have a son who is Keenan Charles. And um, that can be confusing. You would think that my youngest would be Keenan the third or fourth or fifth. But in fact, uh, because we all have different middle names, the third, fourth, fifth, junior, senior all goes away. Um, but it is fun uh, to think about uh, Keenan Charles, who is my son. You all know him as KC. Um, he has the first name Keenan, which obviously carries on that legacy. And then he has Charles, which is my wife's dad's first name. Um, and then we called him KC, which is uh, really an honor of my grandfather. And so uh, that's how all these people's names sort of all fit together. Um, but on this Father's Day, I wanted to th be thankful for just the legacy of Keenan's, um, but the legacy specifically of, of, of my own dad. Um, See, he lives out this idea of, of thanksgiving in just um, the way that he has uh, written uh, to my brother and I in, in written form, in, in little notes, in, in birthday cards and other places where he is able to just have a pro prolific impact on us um, in the sense that he just comes from a really a, a place of just being thankful uh, for us as his kids and thankful for life and thankful for the opportunities that we get to have and I'm thankful for our kids, um, and so I'm thankful that I've had thankfulness modeled for me uh, in my dad, um, and so I want to say thanks to him on this particular Father's Day, um, but I pray that uh, as I live my life out then, that I would be uh, living my life in a place of, of thanksgiving uh, as well, as so that I can pass on that le legacy of thankfulness uh, to, to my son um, and to my kids and to those who come after me. And, which really kind of brings us to this place of looking at uh, 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, verse 18, which is kind of this last little bit of uh, this uh, short series we're doing uh, in these three little verses here in uh, 1 Thess Thessalonians chapter 5, 16, 17, and 18. Um, I'm going to take a, a moment just to uh, review. We started with rejoicing. We can, last week talked about prayer, and this week we're talking about thanksgiving. And so the verse... For this week uh, in First Thessalonians uh, goes like this. Uh, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Before we uh, get into uh, this uh, particular verse of Scripture, I'm going to take a moment and uh, pray for our time together uh, in the Word. God, we give you thanks uh, for so many things. And at this particular moment in time, we want to simply pause and give thanks uh, for loving us um, and for pursuing us. God, speak through your word today clearly, and let nothing that I might say get in the way of what you would want to say to your people here this morning. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So, as I said two weeks ago, we talked about this idea of of uh, rejoicing, and we kind of added those words in there, rejoice in the Lord. Um, and as we have that as our starting place, um, that we rejoice in the Lord, then, then our ability to be in a place of prayer, uh, to be prayerful continually, kind of is born out of that place of rejoicing. And then from that joy then, we, we, we um, uh, sorry, from that prayer then, we have a sense that we um, can only be thankful for the many things that are around us. In some ways, the, the prayer uh, takes kind of the world from being a me-centered kind of place and puts it more as a God-centered kind of place. And as we do that, I think we respond uh, with thankfulness in that how much He loves us and how much He's given us kind of in that. So in this particular verse, we start out uh, as well with this kind of staccato again, right? The staccato is the, the note that sits on the piano quickly and to the point, right? And so it's rejoice pray, and this last one is give thanks, or just thanks, thankfulness, or, or thanks. It's the, the Greek word is eucharisto. It's uh, sometimes when we refer to the, the communion table, we talk about taking the Eucharist. It's a, it's a meal of thanksgiving in some ways. And so um, the, the, what's interesting then um, is that this particular verse, though, goes beyond just this little staccato little thought with the words, uh, for this is God's will for you. For this is God's will for you. Now, is the for this is God's will for you connected just to the give thanks? Um, most scholars, in terms of their grammatical understanding of it, actually, um, the idea of for this is God's will is connected to actually all three of those thoughts. And so, what does it mean uh, for something to be a part of God's will? Um, 
Is it God's will that we would be, uh, we would be in all kinds of kind of bad, difficult, uh, challenging circumstances? No, I don't think so. I think the emphasis here is more that it's God's will that our response to those circumstances would be filled with rejoicing and praying and thanksgiving. And then the last uh, couple words there, uh, in Christ Jesus. When we are in Christ, we have a different perspective on what's going on in the world. We see things from the view of, from the cross. And we experience life, when we experience life then from that vantage point, our kind of world is turned upside down. The, the small become big and the big become small. Everything is sort of changed. And so there's an interesting place in Christ Jesus. If our lives are rooted and established in who Jesus is, our perspective on what's taking place around us changes. If that's not a decision that you've made before, to be walking with Jesus in all of the parts of your life, I invite you to make that decision even here today. If you haven't done that before, call me, email me, use smoke signals, whatever it takes, get a hold of me so we can talk about that essential relationship in the midst of all of this. And then what's interesting here is that these statements are not just about giving thanks, but all three um, sort of are connected together. This rejoicing, this praying, and this thanksgiving are all a part of God's will for us in Christ. But what's interesting is it's not just said here, it's also said earlier in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. These three concepts are kind of put together. And then as well in Philippians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, these three concepts are, putting, uh, are put together as well. There's a sense that there's strength or there's something that Paul is trying to reveal to us that in the midst of the challenging circumstances that we have in our lives, that, that we would then somehow respond to those circumstances with joy, with prayer, and with thanksgiving. There's something there, I think, for us to pick up. So how do we give thanks when we are being persecuted? How do we give thanks when the cancer diagnosis comes? How do we give thanks when there is so much hurt in the world? What keeps us from being in a, keeps us from being in a position of thankfulness? What are the things that rob you of having a thankful heart? Let's explore this a little. And, and I want to look at um, a guy named Alex Hunold. Now, Alex is a, an American rock climber who has climbed uh, the biggest and most difficult fa uh, faces of rock uh, on the earth. You're probably most well known for the fact that he actually uh, did a free solo of El Capitan in uh, Yosemite National Park. And when I say free solo, it means that he has no ropes attached to him. And so if you can imagine, if you've seen the film Free Solo, um, which is uh, the, the chronicle of him doing this particular climb on June 3rd, 2017, um, you're amazed by the fact that how could someone actually do this? Um, how could they actually put them? And he, as he prepared uh, for this climb, he, he studied certain parts of the climb in detail. He spent really 10 years dreaming and thinking about whether or not he was going to do this and how it would, he would envision sort of it taking place. Um, he would mentally move through certain parts of the rock and how would he do it and what moves and what handholds and all the different details of that. It probably goes without saying, in addition to the mental part of preparing for this climb, he had to be in the best physical shape of his life as well. He did exercises to prepare his muscles on his body that he knew would have to be fine-tuned in order for him to be able to do all the things that he needed to do on that rock. In order for these particular muscles to be toned and strengthened in just the right way for this climb, he had to do specific exercises so that those muscles would be ready for when the time was right. So he had a regimen, and this is described somewhere online, where um, he has this kind of interesting uh, device where he can put his fingers into different places, and he would do pull-ups. And for us, it's like, wow, pull-ups are really hard. No, pull-ups are really hard. Um, but he would do pull-ups in kind of a, a completely different kind of way. He would have, he would start with four-finger pull-ups. He would have fingers in different places, and he would do, he would do a pull-up. He would hold it for seven seconds, and then he would draw down, and he would do that seven times in a row. And then he would go to a three-finger pull-up, and he would do seven of those, hold it for seven seconds, and go back down. And then he would go back to a four-finger, he would go to a three-finger, then he would go to a two-finger pull-up, and he would hold his body in place for seven seconds and would do seven of those, go back out three, four, and then start the whole regiment all over again. 
um, that sounds, um, I don't know what the word is there, that sounds painful. It actually sounds impossible because I have a hard time doing one actual pull-up on a bar and holding it for any period of time without sort of shaking. And he has, though, sort of trained all of these muscles in his fingers to be prepared for the climb that was ahead of him. So that is the kind of physical regiment that he needed to be engaged in in order that his muscles would be prepared for the time when he would be on the rock. Let me go back to, so why is it difficult for us to be thankful? I think part of it is that we want to do it our way. I think part of it is that we don't trust God, what, what God has for us uh, in, in our life. Uh, why don't we trust God? Well, we think we know what's best for us, and, and maybe God doesn't know what's best for us. Uh, why is it so hard to be thankful? We get lost in the immediate and forget about the eternal or the bigger perspective on what's really important. Why aren't we thankful? Because we're held back by our own bitterness, our own pain, and our own resentment. Uh, and sometimes being thankful does not get us as much attention on social media as complaining and having outrage in some ways. So how do we get ourselves to be more in the place of thankfulness? How do we get to that place? And I think we could go back to Alex Honnold and actually learn something here. See, he became stronger in those particular muscles that he actually had to use for those things by actually exercising and getting to the place where when the time came, he was ready. See, I think it's uh, that thankfulness does not come naturally to us. We have to practice thankfulness. We have to engage in it in an ongoing kind of way. We have to be able to use those muscles of thankfulness in situations that are mundane and everyday. So when the difficult time comes, we are ready and know how to use those muscles because we are trying to use them. We're not trying to use them for the first time. We've been using them all along and preparing for the moments when God would call us to be thankful in the midst of those difficult circumstances. Hebrews 12, uh, verse 11 says it this way, No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees. Make level paths for your feet, so that the lame may be disabled, but rather healed. So, so what does this mean for us? We, we need a, a steady routine of thanksgiving in our lives. We, we are thankful to God in the circumstances. Are, are we thankful to God in the circumstances we find ourselves in? Can, can we be thankful to God in spite of the circumstances? I think if we have practiced thanksgiving in the smaller parts of our life, it ends up coming back to a place where we can be thankful in the hard times of life as well. If we've practiced complaining and resentment, and entitlement, and the what about me kind of attitude, then that's what will shine through in the real climb that's ahead of us in our lives. So what do we do together as a worshiping community? We, we sing, we, we pray, we proclaim God's goodness, we, we share the good news with people who are around us, we respond to all the circumstances with thanksgiving, we come to church to be reminded of why we are thankful, we hang out with people who are also thankful so that we are inundated with thanksgiving and thankfulness from the people who are around us. In, in my own life, um, I left uh, Bel Air Presbyterian Church um, about four years ago. After serving for 10 years, it was a hard, uh, a kind of a hard goodbye uh, in, say, in leaving that place. And I spent a, about a year of time um, up in the air, not sure what was next. I, I applied for a bunch of jobs. I, I drove Lyft uh, for a little while, um, for a, a very little while. Um, I, I got close to a, a couple of jobs. I was kind of second on the list, uh, but came up just shy of closing the deal on some of those positions. And through it all, I had a deep sense of, of peace most of the time. It, it was hard, uh, but I was determined to make uh, the most of it. I spent a ton of time with family. Uh, I began to coach uh, middle school soccer. I, I, be, I started a peer-to-peer -peer mentoring program at the elementary school. I picked up hiking. I started work, working with an executive coach. I, I, I tried to make the most of a tenuous situation. Um, and, and then it happened. I landed a position at Beverly Hills Presbyterian Church in a time of transition for them and, and uh, frankly, a, a time of transition for me. And it, I worked closely with a good friend 
uh, where I learned a lot and had some of my faith in, in people and humanity sort of restored. I, I had to exercise my faith muscles quite a bit. I learned over time to be thankful for what the Lord had put before me each and every day. I grew in my faith, where God grew faith in me is maybe a better way to sort of say it. And then I ended up here. And I spent a whole month with you fine folks until everything went sideways. Um, a worldwide pandemic, a Zoom-centered church, tele-evangelist is what I became. I was thankful that Fuller Seminary had prepared me for this, you know, with one class in addressing how does a pastor deal with a worldwide pandemic. No, Fuller didn't actually have that class, and no, no one's prepared for what's actually in front of us right now. And then the death of George Floyd and the, the sleeping giant of racism was awoken in a way uh, it hasn't in probably a half century. And, and what does it look like uh, to lead a primarily white church through a time like this? And last weekend, um, as I spent uh, and time with Dave and Carol Wilkinson, I, we sat distance in their backyard and reflected on the life of Lyle Brandt and his life and his ministry. And, and Dave and Carol kind of looked across the table after a little while and said, so how are you? And I responded, I actually feel pretty good. I, I went on to share that based on all that I had been through over the last three and a half, four years, had prepared me for this time. God was in the midst of preparing me. See, I'm thankful that I have an incredible tech team that allows our church to continue to worship online. I'm thankful for a great staff that I get to work with all the time and do the ministry of the church. I'm thankful for a dedicated session that is prayerful for our congregation. I'm prayerful for deacons who reach out to those who are in need with love and with prayer. I'm thankful even to the church um, that has known me for like five minutes. I, I feel like somehow or another they trust me and have put their trust in me. I am thankful that when things haven't gone like we'd like them to go, that the congregation has responded with grace. And I'm thankful to a d bunch of people who I don't even know who keep on giving to the church. And please do continue to your giving to the church. See, at the beginning of this message, I talked about my dad and his life lived from a place of thanksgiving. And so I was blessed with a firm foundation. But it wasn't until I was tested and had to be grateful in the not-so-great circumstances that I had to be built up in my faith through thanksgiving. I couldn't inherit it. I had to work for it. So maybe the level to which we are thankful is some kind of barometer about our faith in some ways. How can we begin to work out those faith muscles in our lives, those thanksgiving muscles in our lives? Maybe it starts by writing a thank you note to someone you've been meaning to thank for quite some time. Maybe it's sitting in your neighborhood park and literally looking around the park and realizing that you're thankful for all of the little things that are there in that park. How can you say thanks to God for the, the little blessings that you receive each and every day, the very breath that you take each morning? We start small. We start small with finger pull-ups. And eventually we can summit El Capitan without any ropes. Or... Maybe we start small with just a couple of regular pull-ups. Uh, like enough faith and enough thanksgiving, maybe just the size of a mustard seed. And we start there, and we see how that builds up, and see how those muscles build up. And then we sit back and then marvel at how God will take it all and do many great things through it all. Let's close in a time of prayer. Thank you, God, for the trifecta of truth that you have revealed to us through Paul and his letter to the people of Thessalonica. Rejoice. Pray. Thanks. And as we live out that rhythm in our lives, may we reflect your glory to all the people who are watching us from afar and from close. And not because we are perfect, but by your grace and with your help, the help of your Holy Spirit, might we reflect your goodness and love to all we come in contact with. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you uh, join us uh, for this last song, This Is My Father's World. Take it away, guys.
This is my Father's word. And to my listening ears, all nature sings and around me rings the music of the spheres. This is my Father's word. So good. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. Uh, receive this blessing. Uh, go, people of God, rejoicing, praying, thanking in all circumstances, for this is God's will in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Have a great week. Look forward to seeing you next week.